Holland. Um, hope you enjoyed all the videos I showed of Antonio. I have a new project I want to show you. Oh. His name is Jamil. Um, he's not so happy because we, we gave him a different bit. Um, Jamil is going to be something really interesting for you to follow every week or every other week. I have to see how many times I, I post a video. Jamil is a 14-year-old Caribbean, a, a Dutch warm blood, uh, crossed with an Arabian. Um, his, his owners don't have that much time. And since we were looking for a horse to do demos with and actually a horse to com convert into a Doma Vaquera horse, um, their owners were so gracious to offer him to us to, to be able to use. So I'll be giving a demo on the 20th of May here in Holland. So before then, we're going to try to see how far we can get him in his training as a Vaquera horse. Now, of course, he's already been ridden um, dressage. So um, we're going to see how well he conforms into a Vaquera horse. So I've already ridden him one time um, just to, to feel. Today I actually wanted to lunge him because there's a couple of things I want to explain about how to lunge a horse. Um, if you're not that experienced as a rider, it's easier to lunge your horse in, uh, in conjunction with riding. Um, and that makes it easier to really gymnasticize um, and get your horse straighter. Um, so if you're not that experienced, lunging is a really good way to do that. So um, as you notice, everybody is just walking past and not paying attention, so it's a little bit noisy. Um, but so what I'm going to do is, um, uh, or what I already did was first time I rode Jamil, um, is I wanted to see how well he reacted to my leg aids, how sensitive he was. Obviously when a horse with a little bit more temperament, some, a horse that will, um, you know, that has a little bit higher in blood, um, we don't want a horse we have to kick around the, the riding arena. So, and Jamil is all of those things. He's very smart as well, so I think he will do very well. Um, we've, uh, today we've put a, a Pelham in. I actually had my Spanish um, Pelham, uh, but it was too small, unfortunately. So now we have just a regular old Pelham, and I've explained before that um, you know there's nothing wrong with that. So I'll, I'll also be posting today, um, or this week, a, a video a little bit more information about bits so that'll be interesting for you to see as well so I'll be doing this every week we'll be showing Jamil um, uh, or every other week like I said and and so you can follow us and this will be a great way for you to find out how you can con convert your horse um, into a vaquero horse from just being a regular riding horse whether that's a western horse or dressage horse or any other kind um, it's it's uh, not that difficult. It, it helps a lot if they've already been, been ridden and already had a start. But then, you know, we want to make sure we, we work towards riding with one hand. And that's what we'll be doing with Jamil um, and uh, in May giving a demo. So um, I hope you enjoy. Um, and let me know if you have any questions about what I'm doing as we go along and make progression. Um, after the first uh, attack videos I did, I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up um, on the ones I did in Holland because while I'm here, I saw a couple of things I wanted to explain that I forgot to explain, um, but also um, I was slapped on the fingers by Antonio because <laughs> he saw my video on the attack with the picture of the bit and the bit was quite rusty and he immediately said um, that this was not correct. Um, that you should have a stainless steel bit. So I explained, I said, well, I said, you know, horses prefer the sweeter taste of rust. And um, that didn't seem to matter very much. Um, of course, you can take copper as well. There's different kinds of bucketo bits, but generally they're, they're quite um, simple in terms of materials. They're not quite advanced in terms of how much materials they use. So. Um, so he explained to me that, you know, you need to have your, your stainless steel bits. Now, the stainless steel bits are not silver like the ones that are used um, in English. They're actually made to look a little bit varnished, so they look a little bit older. Um, so it's, it still doesn't look like the English bits like you see here, like the Weymouth um, for the double bridle, for example. So as you can see, there's lots and lots of of um, bridles here, um, lots and lots of different bits. They even use they even use the Pelham. It's just lovely. Everybody's just walking back and forth and, and making noise and everything. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, so um, like here you see, just a regular Pelham. Um, they'll even tend to use. At one point, um, all Antonio's bridles were actually stolen. 
Um, so he had to get, you know, uh, bits and, and a couple of bridles quick, quick, quick. So he, he just bought whatever was available. And, and um, at that time he had said he used more Pelhams than he normally would. Um, excuse me for my cold, by the way. Um, the whole time I've been here, I've been sick. So um, I have a little bit of a stuffed up nose and a, and a funny voice. But anyway, so um, so before I go further on the bits, I wanted to explain is why I didn't I didn't tell you about the mosquito. So um, all of you know the typical mosquito that's used um, on um, the Spanish bridles. So the mosquito, um, I asked just to make sure um, I, I knew the answer, but just to make sure that I'm telling giving you the right information. The mosquito is actually there. Um, to, um, you know, um, and when, when you work in the campo, um, there's lots and lots of flies. So when the flies get on the horse's eyes, they have the mosquito that goes back and forth. That's why you also normally cut the, the pole, basically the hair on the front, the forelock um, away. So you don't also have your, your, you know, your forelock hair and your mosquito. Um, so you have the mosquito, you have the, for normal work, it's in leather, these leather strands. But you also have it in um, uh, the horsehair versions and the silk versions for used for competitions or ferias. Um, but for everyday work, you use the um, uh, the leather one. Sometimes I'm a little bit lazy and I leave my horsehair one on there. Um, and also because the the leather one uh, was chewed up by Isolde, as I explained in my previous video. So anyway, so um, so that's a, a, another thing that I, I failed to explain. Sometimes you'll see the bridles with a, a chin strap. Um, or the, yeah, the chin, no, the chin would be here, the, um, I say the throat strap, I guess. Um, this is not so common, but you do see it. Um, uh, you have the Jerezana and the Sevillana, um, two different types of bridles. Um, it doesn't really matter, but usually you see them without, basically. Um, so back to the bit. So I have, a, I have a video of Antonio riding a young horse, and he had a very short, bit so the shanks were very short kind of like this one i'm pretty sure it's almost the same um which was quite interesting and i asked him why and he says well, well this is a young horse a filly as they call it potra um and it's you know in the beginning you use a much i guess he, he considered a softer bit so with shorter shorter shanks um now don't be mistaken by that um because how the bit works is not doesn't necessarily mean if the shorter it is the softer it is actually um, for a rider like Antonio yes because he has very good hands very good seat very independent seat um, but you have to watch out because um, with the shorter shanks that means when it starts to work so I explained how it works and here you see quite a high port so most of the bridles here have quite high ports um, but yeah this is this is possible with experienced riders and, and riders that know how to use these. So, um, but when it when your bit tilts, um, you know it can the port can hit the the roof of the mouth. Um, so you have to have very controlled hands, very soft hands, to be able to use these these bits. Now with the short shanks, that means the shorter they are, the quicker it works. So the slightest movement will make it tilt already. So you know it's 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 you know technically for somebody that has you know a very good seat very independent hands and knows how to use these bits um if you have long shanks it takes longer so if you see here this one is quite long so look at the difference here quite a difference um it takes longer for it to work but once it works, it works stronger. So there's kind of a, you know, catch 22 to both. It's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But I guess in everything, like I explained, it's all about having, you know, the right hands. It's, there's no sharp bits, to, regardless if they're long or if they're short, it's all about how you use it. Um, so, you know, I, I got some responses on my previous video about, about the bits um, and using them and, and really, there's nothing wrong with a curved bit as long as you know how to use it and as long as you, you learned how to ride with an independent seat. So another thing to, 
to explain. Um, when you're choosing your bit, it's quite important. People usually just, you know, usually they're offered on these websites with Spanish riding gear. If you don't, you know, order them in Spain, you're basically order pretty standardized bits. Well, you have to watch out with, with the ratio between this and this because the, the taller, the longer the top is, the purchase as we call it, um, the taller that is, the longer that is, the, also the more um, working you, know, you get on the pole. Um, but this is basically for horses that, um, that tend to have their head a little bit high. You might want a little bit longer uh, purchase at the top. For horses that, that carry themselves very deep already and are hard to get a little bit you know, on, on the, on the lead line, um, then you want, I know that's not the right word, but um, it's direct translation from Dutch. Um, you want to have a shorter purchase because these horses already have that you know, tendency to go deep. So you wanna use one that's a little bit less, you know, that works a little bit less. So those three, you know, that work, that they feel on the pole, they work, you know, what they feel on their chin and in their mouth. So then you want to, you know, use something that's a little bit less, um, I wouldn't, I don't wanna say severe, but you know, has less effect, let me put it that way. Um, so it, it um, you know, it'll encourage the horse to, to carry itself a little bit higher. We don't want them to go really deep. Um, you'll see that in the videos with Antonio riding. You don't want the horses to be super deep and hyperflexion. You know, they carry themselves quite normal, round, but quite normal in terms of and natural in terms of carriage. So that's an important thing to look after when you're choosing your bit. So you have to watch out the ratio between the bottom, the top. So if you if you get the, if you order them from the right place, they'll actually they will have um, you know the choice to be able to choose that. And you can also choose the height of the port. Um, I would not recommend a high port, something much more low um, than this. Um, and, um, and sometimes the material as well. You can choose um, um, stainless steel, but a lot of times then they're silver. So you don't want that. You want something that at least looks like this. So in the past they were iron, um, and then they did rust a little bit. Obviously in Spain they don't rust. So. Um, you know, ha and like I said, now they have them stainless steel, but they're, they're varnished like this. So at least it looks like, um, it doesn't look like you're, um, riding with a Weymouth or something. Um, so those are just a couple of things I wanted to point out after as, as a follow-up, um, to my first video. Um, I hope that clarifies a couple more things. Um, uh, there's maybe even more you could say about the bits. Um, if, if you need even more information, um, just let me know um, and I'll, and I'll uh, do that next time. Um, I do also wanna do a little follow up on the saddle as well, um, explain a little bit more about um, the functionalities of the different pieces, um, et cetera, but I'll do that um, another time. So, um, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please, you know, write them down below um i i do answer them um and get back to you or um on my facebook where i post my videos um and subscribe i'd say i don't i keep forgetting to say that but please subscribe so um you can make sure you don't miss any of of the videos um in case you're not uh you're not um on my facebook page and get the regular updates so please subscribe uh spread the word we're um, spreading the gospel of Doma Moquera, as I say, and uh, we really want to get the word out um, to, you know, uh, have more people on board of this um, uh, growing passion for Doma Moquera outside of Spain, uh, providing this information in English and, um, you know, getting people enthusiastic about uh, this discipline that I know and love. So thank you very much and uh, see you next time.